in, I mean, the range of stuff. It's, you know, colourful. Mm -hmm. I had to go with the half for car when you yeah. were stopped. Yeah. Got a 10 grand fine, allegedly. Yeah. yeah. In an old firm game. My first what was, one. What was that about? <laughs> that was my, my, fir my first old firm game. Obviously, the build up derbies are yeah. massive up there. You know, yeah. you've got every tabloid under the sun is just all about Celtic Rangers. Mm. You know, here we, we might have had the Daily Post and Liverpool Echo and maybe one or two nationals yeah. every so often. But every national papers it's it's six seven pages deep on each team and it's a uh, big noise and yeah. then obviously could have had the merseyside derby experience you're a part of it all do you want to know the difference do you want to and i was just yeah i love can't wait for it love derbies and a half decent record so i fancy myself and it was a frustrating game there where we were well the better side mm. but we just couldn't score mm. and we were getting beat so as the left back you're getting hooked off and I could see me sign coming up and because you're the new boy you want to impress the crowd yeah, you want to impress yeah. your teammates and yeah, the, the decision was right probably because mm. that's what you do you take off a full back and you bring on a forward player to get yourself back into yeah. the into the game and my roommate ends up coming on Peter Lundgren and scoring so his decision was spot on, spot on. <laughs> but I was just over keen the occasions probably got to me where you mm. think you should be able to handle that the occasion. Yeah. It was just because things were going wrong mm. and it shouldn't have. We were much the better side finding ourselves to it. And I wanted to get be part of that team to get us back into the game. I didn't want to be that left back and in change room coming off job, you know, and, and I was just so frustrated for the for the wrong reasons. Mm. Um and he said a few choice words. I said a few choice <laughs> words back to him. And then that was sort of that was it. Um, and then Monday morning, uh, obviously it, it blew up in the papers, you know, pictures of me telling him where to go and he's telling <laughs> me where to go. And it was, because uh, no one really had a really close relationship with him. He was mm. like a general. Mm. Um, besides the, made the captain, you know, that's probably the only person you'd speak to. So you, you'd always want to impress him. So I hadn't, so I've done pretty well. You hadn't impressed him at this point. <laughs> and I, blew, I blew it all, you know, at this moment. So I was like, oh, how's this going to handle it? And we come in, I had to go to his office. And it's surreal, like what goes on in football. And you're thinking, right, I'm, I'll have to just sort of bite my tongue and just take it. You know, I was wrong. He was wrong, mm. in my opinion, what he said, mm. you know, but, um, and I've reacted badly. So it's the combination of everything. You think, I'm going to get out of this one. <laughs> And we sat in his office. There was John Gregg, who obviously yeah, yeah. a massive yeah, Rangers legend. He was part of the coaching staff. Yeah. And uh, there was me, John Gregg, and the manager, and the big, big phone in the middle, waiting for the chairman to call. Oh. And um, he just spoke to us brilliantly. Mm. He just said, um, "Loving the attitude. Mm. Obviously, step, overstepped the line. Mm. Uh, there's a cash for kids charity going at the radio station. We have one here, at Radio City. Yeah. Um, he said, "Look, I can't do nothing." Um, he said, so we'll, we'll throw some money to them. Mm. Um, used to shake hands, speak about it, um, and I'll let you go. Mm. So that was it. Yeah. Problem was, the manager's scouts wasn't very good. <laughs> My Dutch wasn't very good. <laughs> Neither does John Gregg's scouts was, wasn't very good. So there's the three of us. I can't understand John Gregg. He can't understand me. And we were just sort of, and we just laughed. We just yeah. we just had a, a little giggle because yeah. we knew when I was talking they couldn't take it all in. Mm. Um, have the cat just shook hands, smacked me across the head. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Train John Gregg walked out. He was left sided, so he had a, a bit of a soft thoughts for me. Mm. So, and that was it. Done, dusted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Played the next game, and then that was it. All forgotten. But uh, but I put the club in a bad light. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's the way the media put it up there. I, I've, I've I fell for it, hot mm. line and sinker. Yeah. You know, and instead of doing that in the changing room, I've done it in full flow. Paid the price for it, but it was good for the manager mm. and myself and Lena came for me. Mm. Um, but then for him to pick me next week and then get the Champions League goals and, and, and still be a part of it was good, but we were, we were struggling. Mm. We were struggling side, so I think the frustration for him seeing that we were struggling. Yeah. Um, and struggling means... Being a point two points behind Celtic, yeah, yeah, you know, and um, you know, I think there was a part where we were unbeaten, mm. but we kept on drawing too many games, and the the gap was getting bigger. And 
unfortunately Dick and his coaching staff got relieved of the duties not far after but I got injured very very early yeah um, right. against Dundee I think it was Dundee yeah you'd already scored your first goal for Rangers against Kiev Dynamo Kiev yeah free kick yeah. free kick well, um, I would say top bin but more like a pinball couple of deflections for <laughs> taking it take the top bin <laughs> taking it you know, and that was the dance of the players mm. the players said you're on them yeah. I was like what have I I took a free kick with Evans first team, really, you know. So the left foot one, mate. Yeah, that's the pressure what it was. coming to the sheedy days come yeah, back to yeah. <laughs> in my youth. Amazing. So that was obviously get good, mm. but my knee um, didn't feel. But when you're playing, you don't feel anything. Mm. You didn't that's feel. Right, yeah, you don't. It's just the day after recovery, a little bit of swelling. Mm. But thinking, I've been here before with Evans. Eighteen months, you can't get play of the year and have a bad knee. No, you can't play in the Premier League mm. with a bad knee. You, you get found out. Um, but it was probably was down to the injections. The injections is probably why Everton did turn down or pull the contract away. Yeah. In hindsight, looking back they now, knew. they probably thought they knew something wasn't going to happen. They weren't going to take the gamble. If they got a choice to take the money, which is fair play, that's yeah, up yeah. to them. But personally, for me, it hurts. Yeah. Um, Still hurts now, doesn't it? Yeah. Massively. Massively. But what, what can you do? Mm. You know, you, you've just got to get on with it. And they've... Rangers have put a lot of faith in you. Yeah. So you've got to pay back that faith mm. and, and the fans. Out oh, for 18 months, is that right? Yeah, that was really hard to swallow. Cause yeah. Did you keep getting back and then it was got going back, again? Got back, but the way the... So I got injured just before the Christmas period. Yeah. I went to... This is what i got to give credit for Rangers for. You know, being at the club at Everton, you know, medically we didn't have the money to go and see the best specialist. You know, we wouldn't get an X-ray. It'd just be time. It'd be ice and you know whatever it was back then. You know, mm. and that's just the way it was. You know, you mm. didn't know any difference because of Rangers medical staff. They knew um, that a full-time medical staff, full-time doctor, and it was um, just before Christmas where they phoned up um, Doctor Stedman, who was the number one knee surgeon. Yeah. Um, it's going to cost a lot of money. Mm. He's gonna, it's gonna be uh, difficult. Flew out there, um, met him. Wonderful guy, mm. uh, very old. Thinking, yeah. you know, <laughs> but looks the, you know, on one, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, tan, yeah, the yeah. tan, the teeth, the full it, <laughs> and you know, he, he had a fantastic clinic in mm. Vale, Colorado, and shirts on the wall, Ronaldo's. You know, you see everyone who he's yeah, done in the past. Yeah. You think you're in good hands. Mm. Um, Rangers sent me in a club doctor who's Dutch with a credit card. Just get it sorted. Um, and he done a few tests on me. So you're fine. I said, "Well, I, I hope so." But I've been doing this for eighteen months. Mm. And he goes, "Well, I just I'm going to give you the scan one more time." And then within the result of the scan, he threw me in the operation theatre. He went, "Like, how are you doing certain exercises?" And I said, "I don't know. I just do." I just do. It. Um, he goes, "Something's not right." And mm. that's when I went, "Oh." Okay, um, doctor, obviously I've got to sign the paperwork to say, let's get it done. Um, that happened. He come in afterwards, said, operation brilliant. Mm. He said, um, "He said, have you had injections? I said, yeah. He said, where have you had them? I said, I mean, he goes, no, but where and how have they been administrated? I went to like, a marker pen. He just said, where you saw where you saw this is, you point and they put a knee in. And he went... And he looked at my doctor, and my doctor went, nothing to do with us. Mm. Um, normally, when you, if you do an injection, which again, look, you're in doctor's hands, you listen to of course. what happens. The They put it through an ultrasound so you can see where the injection's going. Um, the ones at Everton were blind. They were, weren't at Everton, they were in Western Hospital. I remember the first one, I was in agony. And he, I drove. I had to phone me a friend up to come pick me up. And um, four or five days really sore. And then it winds down and then you're fine yeah. again. So when I went for my second one, I mentioned, I couldn't walk for a few days, you know. That really hurt. And he goes, no, you'll be fine. I said, no, but I wasn't. I'm really sore. Mm. I said, I had to walk off crutches. He went, no, you never. I said, it is. I said, I had to have crutches. <laughs> well, glad, yeah. He said, oh, no, it's, it's just the fluid, blah, blah, blah. I was like, right, okay. So you, again... You, you, you listen to medical advice so you, you do it but that's what's made me do what I could do that was hiding the fact that I could do certain exercises and that's why Rangers probably went there's something wrong but he, he's doing what I'm asking him so I can't yeah. say no uh, same as the surgeon so the crystallizations it, 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 it tore through me tendon 
So it wasn't, even though I've ripped a, a little bit of my tendon, probably playing and overplaying, that's crystallised inside my tendon. So I started killing all my tendons. He said, you've got one fresh, thin strand, uh, strand left. He said, that go, that went, you, that was it. Your career's over. He said, you're going to struggle. He said, yeah, but, they... you know, I'm confident. If you listen to what I say, don't train too hard. Don't do nothing. Listen to, I'll give you a, a, a rehab programme mm. um, and go back and you, you, you'll be back. So I was like, well, if you've got these players playing, yeah, you know, yeah. um, confident, fl uh, flew back, and then that was the rehab kicked in, and I was flying. Yeah. You know, he was brilliant. I was I had his own personal number. You could speak to him, um, explain I'm doing this. He's going, right, that's good, but don't do any more. Just keep doing that. Um, I was on the pitch after three and a half, four months. He did say, look, it's going to take five to 12 months. Did he? So that's where you're at. Yeah. He said, it's all about your rehab. Yeah. He said, your knee's fine. Um three and a half, four months I'm running mm. um, and just the way the season finished I've missed everything yeah, yeah. you know so I've, um, so that was really a bit frustrating but then you're thinking got the summer to, mm. to sort of get myself ready for pre-season um, started pre-season with the first team but when I started getting to 90% and sprints after a couple of days it'll sort of blow up a little bit it was just a wasn't painful, but just the the, um, the movement wasn't there. Mm. Uh, so you, you stop starting, stop starting. And this agent, I know what's happened. I said, I know what's happened. You just have to come back over. So that was in the summer mm. then. So problem with that situation was you're back to square one. Yeah. The recovery is exactly the same. He said, he opened me up. Um, basically, the sheath over your knee does it, it makes you move. That was... So it just grew back a little bit too thick, so it was a rubbing. Oh, no, so okay. the actual uh, mechanics of your knees spot on. It's yeah. just that skin's too tight. I just need to lift it up and put it back looser. But unfortunately, your rehab is going to be exactly the same. Oh, so sorry. that was a kick in the teeth, obviously. But then yeah. you're thinking, well, my knee's fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I get back fit, I'll be, uh, you know, I'll be flying. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately for me, Rangers were struggling. Like you wanted to be part of it. You start pushing yourself a little bit, but then they, they started doing well. Mm. They started playing really well, and there was no rush for me. Right, okay. So it sort of, while it frustrated me, you wanted to be a it's part of it. Pressure, I though. probably could have played near the end of that season. Right, I probably okay. could have been a part of it. Yeah. But it got tense. They won the cup. They won the League Cup. Mm. And... It went down to the last game. Mikel scored penalty. Mikel Arteta yeah. um, to win the league. So the manager didn't want to take a risk. Yeah, of course. I obviously wanted to be a part of it, but then also didn't want to jump on the bandwagon <laughs> and, and take the credit for winning yeah. the title. Yeah, which yeah. is again a reason why I went up there to win trophies. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking, well, hey, I've been here. Too. He's haven't done nothing. Yeah, yeah I, haven't, I haven't done nothing yet, and that was frustrating. So watch the rest of this Inside the Game podcast. Head over to the More Than The Game channel or click the video that's on screen now.